that's heavy. Shoot, that, that's heavy. Peachtools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Peach Tools. How are we all going today? Hey, look what the courier brought me, guys. Another bloody plasma cutter, you're saying? Hey, don't tell the missus, eh? Because, you know, I get a lot of these plasma cutters and, and she says to me, how come you're getting all these parcels delivered, Pete? And all I say to her is they're really cheap machines, so, you know, I'll just buy them when they're on special. Anyway, guys, this one that I've just got delivered here is a seventh generation Best Arc machine. But you know what? It's a 65 amp version of it. Now, I don't think these are available retail yet. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna pull it out of the box, see what we get, see if it's actually any bigger than the other 50 amp machine, because this would be the first 65 amp machine that I've ever had that can run on 110 or 220 volts. So it remains to be seen how the thing will go. Anyway, guys, we'll pull it out of the box and see what we get. Anyway, guys, if you like my videos, remember to subscribe, give me a like, Drop a comment in the comments below, we can have a bit of a chat. And let's open this baby and see what I've got. So my friends, a 65 amp plasma cutter that runs on 110 or 220. Now I don't know about that because I'm even having trouble in my workshop with the circuit breakers that I've got. Uh, they just tend to trip out all the time, even on a 50 amp machine. So I don't know what a 65 amp machine will do. And I don't know how they can get them to run at 65 amps on a standard single phase. Because what I've come to realize is anything over about 50 amp, you're gonna need three phase, because give it enough oomph to get it going, you know what I mean? But anyway, they say that it works, so let's pull it out of the box and see what we get, guys. So, once again, guys, remember I'm around the other side of the world, so I like my stuff really well packed. <laughs> Here we go again. It is well packed as well, guys. Here's the machine itself. Let's pull them out and have a look at what we got. Wow, that's heavy. Shoot, that, that's heavy. Oh, there we go, this is the machine, don't need that. And I think we've got all the bits and bobs here, guys. Get rid of that, Pete. <laughs> what have we got, what have we got, what have we got? Wow, that's a lot heavier than the standard seventh generation machine, guys. Let me go and grab a standard seventh generation machine and I'll show you the difference. Right, guys, this is the standard seventh generation machine. And of course, this is a 50 amp machine. Get rid of that for a second. Now, if we put them both together, they both look about the same, don't they? But we're a little bit higher on this one, and we're also a little bit longer as well. And I think we're also a little bit wider. And the weight is really, there's a big weight difference in these guys. So the 65 amp one, I would say, has got a lot more gizmos inside it than what the 50 amp one has. You notice my technical ability there, gizmos? That's a high-tech word for components, guys. So they both look about the same, guys, but this one here is definitely chunkier than this one here. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Pete, why you got a best arc machine again? Because I like what I like, guys. I mean, if you find something that's good and they keep improving it, I want to make sure that when they improve their machines that they actually do what they say they're going to do, if you know what I mean. And these machines here are really quite a cheap machine. So with the amount of functions you get for the money, and now with the 65 amp cutting power, Pete just wants to check it out and make sure it goes properly. So if we actually check out the seventh generation 50 amp one, guys, you see here we've got a basic on off switch here. On off. Now if we have a look on the bigger machine, here's the 65 amp version of it. Let's have a look. Turn them around like so, and you can see there, guys, we have got a great big circuit breaker here. So that just shows you that we're getting up in the amperage. And I really have my doubts whether this can run on a household supply. But we shall find out, guys. So let's have a look at the box of goodies that we get with it. What do we get? We get the Best Art BTC 650DP manual, and it's in English, and you can actually read it, which is a good thing. Have you seen one of my other videos about the uh, manual I got with the plasma cutter one? It was absolutely gibberish. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go and check that out. It's quite funny, guys. Check that out. Uh, we get a 220 to 110 converter, which is also awesome. Sometimes you've got to buy these extra, and they can be about 30 bucks, 25, 30 bucks. So if you get it included, that's all good. Get about three meters of airline as well. And I don't know why we need the airline guys because this comes in pre-plumbed in the back. We don't even have to assemble the water trap. It's all done for us. It's another reason why I like this model of machine. We get the standard three meter earth lead. Quite light, they all seem to be quite light, these earth leads. I don't know why they make the earth leads so light, but what I like to do is just change it out to something a little bit heavier. 
But that's just me, of course. We got some thread seal tape, guys, and a couple of sets of consumables, and a couple of hose clips. And last but not least, we've got an AG60P torch. Now, the AG60P runs quite cheap consumables, which is what I like. I love cheap. It has a ergonomic handle tag. You see that ergonomic? Isn't that a big word for Pete? Ergonomic. Hey, I read a dictionary this morning, guys, and that's my word of the day, ergonomic. Anyway, it runs really, really cheap consumables, and it's about three meters long, like I said. I mean, I don't see any point at all at paying like $100 for a set of 20 or 25 consumables. It's just a waste of money. So what we'll do, my friends, is we'll plug it in and see if the thing actually runs at 65 amps. Some of them I've had before, they say that they're 50 amps, and you turn the amp dial up, and they only get like to 45, and that sort of thing, and that annoys me. And that can't be right either, guys. So if we plug them in, and then we'll see what happens, guys. Turn them on, and see what happens. It's starting to get something lighting up here. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, we've got an error code already. See, we've got EO5 error code, and we can't seem to do anything. I think I know what that is, guys. Hold on. Because this machine is fully automated, it won't actually tr let you start the machine until you plug the air hose into it. So if we plug an air hose into it, hopefully that warning will go out. There we go, there we go, there we go. Had me worried there for a second. So we're 85 PSI, as you can see here, we're way too high because the two bars here on the top, that's telling us that our air pressure is too high and we're running at 50 amp. So will it go any more than 50 amp, guys? They're selling this as a 65 amp machine, so let's have a look. <laughs> 65 amps. I like it, I like it, I like it. Anyway, guys, come back for part two where I'm going to run this thing through its paces and see if it can actually cut what it says it should be able to cut. Now, it says in the instruction book that it should cut 16 or 17 millimetres. So that's quite a hunk of steel, guys. Same as usual, my friends. If you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments below, and we'll see you next time, mate. Oh, by the way, guys, if you've got some other machines that you want me to review, just put them in the comments below, and I'll see if I can sneak a couple past the missus, and we can do some more reviews. See you, guys. Bye. Pete's Tools.com.